you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try this question on your own before moving on. Our first step in solving this question, of course, is to draw a picture. So here we have the cylindrical tank, and on top of that we have the hemisphere. Notice that the bottom is flat, as stated in the question. We know that the volume of this tank is 13 pi meters cubed, so let's write down the formula for the volume of this structure. So the volume equation will contain the sum of two terms. First, we have the volume of the cylindrical portion of the tank, and then we also have the volume of the hemisphere that is sitting on top of the tank. The question noted that the equation for the volume of a hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed, so we've used that in our total volume equation. Again, the question notes that the volume is 13 pi, so we can plug that in for v. We'll notice that pi appears in all three terms of this equation, so we can divide every term by pi. Perhaps another wise idea would be to multiply each term by 3. And that way, the 3 in the denominator here will, will cancel out. Now this equation can actually be solved for h rather easily by first subtracting 2r cubed from both sides of the equation. And then we can divide both sides by 3r squared, and that's going to allow us to isolate the h. Now this is a result that we can hold on to and we will be using it momentarily, so let's just set that aside for now. Next, we will turn to the surface area of the tank. We'll notice that the surface area equation contains the sum of three different surface areas. The first is the surface area found at the flat bottom of the tank, which is circular shaped and therefore has an area of pi r squared. The second term is the area of the side of the cylinder, and it turns out that that is equal to 2 pi r h. The third surface area will be the surface area of the hemisphere that's sitting on top of the cylinder, and that was given to us in the question as being 2 pi r squared. We can now begin to have a sense of why we solved the previous equation for h, because what we can do is plug that expression for h into the surface area equation. This equation can be cleaned up just a little bit. We can actually add the pi r squared with the 2 pi r squared first. We can then cancel a radius here in the numerator and there in the denominator. Perhaps we can then distribute the 2 pi to both terms in the numerator. We can then split up the numerator of this fraction right here. A little more simplifying, 78 divides evenly by 3, and then over here we can cancel out an r from numerator and denominator. Indeed, now we have two like terms with the pi r squared terms, so we can take the 3 pi and subtract the 4 pi over 3 and combine those like terms. And finally, it's going to be a good idea to move this r from the denominator up to the numerator. When we do that, the r to the positive 1 will become r to the negative 1. Now that looks to be about the simplest that we can make the surface area equation. Our next step in order to optimize this equation is to take its derivative, so that will do next. The derivative of the surface area can just be expressed as surface area prime. We'll use a power rule here by pulling down the 2, multiplying to give us 10 pi over 3, and then it becomes r to the positive 1. And then we can use the power rule again to pull down that minus 1 so we get minus 26 pi, and then subtract 1 from the exponent to give us r to the negative 2. We then set the derivative, of course, equal to 0. Why don't we add this 26 pi r to the negative 2 to both sides of the equation. We can then multiply both sides by r to the positive 2. That's a neat little trick because the r to the negative 2 will cancel with the r to the positive 2. Over here, we'll end up with r cubed. We'll then move along to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. We could divide both sides by pi to cancel those out. Divide by 10 on both sides. Notice that 78 tenths reduces to 39 fifths, so we can write that as r cubed equals 39 fifths. And then finally, to solve for the radius, we can take the cube root of both sides. We'll come over here and show the result. We get the cubed root of 39 fifths. Now that is indeed the value for r. It's actually known as a critical value. We haven't yet proved that that value actually minimizes the surface area. But one way to show that it indeed does is to use the first derivative test. Now in that test, we simply plot the critical value on the middle of a number line, and then we choose a value that's less than the critical number and also greater than the critical number, and we plug it into the first derivative. 
Now it turns out that the cube root of 39 fifths is approximately 1.98. So on the left side we can choose 1 to plug into the first derivative and on the right side we can choose 2. Let's bring back the first derivative. Now if you plug in 1 for the radius in the first derivative you will get a negative result. Now when the first derivative is negative that of course means that the surface area function is decreasing. If you plug 2 into the first derivative, you will get a positive result. It's probably best to use a calculator to prove that to yourself. A positive first derivative indicates that the surface area function is increasing in that interval. So we can see from this picture that right in the middle of this number line, right at the cubed root of 39 fifths, we indeed get a minimum surface area. So the correct answer for the radius does in fact turn out to be the cube root of 39 fifths. As always, thanks for taking the time to view this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for additional videos. You can also send your own questions to the email address listed on the screen.